What's going on guys, Enzo here, welcome back to Around the Track, this is where we talk about all the hot new things going on within the Coast community, and today, we have the largest update so far. I'm currently recording this on July 30th, 2024 at 6 o'clock p.m., so yeah, the announcement is less than 24 hours, but guess what? I called it. I literally called it in my vlog yesterday. The vlog is probably going to release after this video. I imagine it's probably going to get leaked like it did for Twisted Timbers. And sure enough, Kings of Ian actually was the one who ended up releasing it by accident. They pretty much had the promotional ad already ready for the coaster. Like, of course, they had all the promotional and animation art already done. Um, but pretty much how it works is that that stuff is on a timeline. So you can have it set up for it to be released. Unfortunately, it got actually released a day early. And they did take it down. But we now know the name. The name of the coaster is Raptera. So I will be calling this coaster Raptera going forward for the updates. It's actually easier for me to say that than Kings of Me in 2025 launch wing roller coaster. That's way too much. But we also got some information from that teaser or that ad. It says it is going to be the world's tallest and longest uh, launch wing roller coaster. I do hate that it's not going to be the fastest. I really was hoping that they were going to go for all three of those. Unfortunately, they're not going to make it the fastest. But it will be the tallest and longest. They didn't say the height. My guess is maybe 135 to 145. We also know what the train design is going to look like. And that does look pretty cool. It's like this nice tan color. It's going to look really well with the uh, with the green track. Big shout out to Katie Fanatics. He actually hit me up at literally like 3 o'clock today. Right when I was actually about to make the audio or the narration for this video. And I had to kind of put that on hold. Get out the POV. Because yes, WRIC, shout out to them. We also got the POV release, and we also know that it's gonna be the tallest and longest launch wing roller coaster. Not only that, they're about to finish the inversion. It's probably gonna be done tomorrow because it's literally raining outside right now. But the inversion, the first inversion, will more than likely be done tomorrow on the announcement day. Uh, I imagine they were probably trying to get it done today. I don't know if they did or not. Uh, like I said, six o'clock, so they do still have time to get it done. I just don't know if they're going to weather permitting. I'm going to go ahead and let you all check out what's going on outside of the park. And I'll come back right with you guys uh, to show you all what's going on inside the park. Okay, guys, today is July 29th. The announcement is in two days. This is going to be my last update before the announcement. I told you all I was coming back over here. Uh, the track, as far as the track, it doesn't look the same. It definitely is different pieces of the track. Um, from what I'm noticing, though, they still are leaving them in the same spot. That's a newer piece of support right there. So that's new. And then that whole area looks like it's gone. So again, all that track has been installed. Uh, the skyline is right there. I'll zoom in. But that is the B&M inversion right there. So that's really cool. Uh, I'm gonna come over here. I don't, I'll probably get a couple pictures out here. But after that, I'm going to head inside the park and I'm very excited to see this thing up close and personal. That's literally so close I can almost touch that, like seriously, that's pretty awesome. Alright, let me come down here. It's awesome to see two B&Ms in the park now. I don't know what this piece is, so let me know in the comment section below what this piece is. It's definitely some sort of piece of steel has this weird angle to it but just so you all can get a little better angle i actually do it from the fence view but i don't know what this piece is it's it's not a piece it's actually multiple pieces uh all together so if you take a look at it that's what it looks like so there's multiple pieces together and then something over here obviously they have kind of like this heat type of wrap over it and if we come down a little bit we got these crazy shaped pieces of track over here it's kind of getting warm out here. I am going to be doing a vlog today, so stay tuned for that. Be on the channel later today. These pieces of track look very, very interesting. They don't even look normal. Do not enter. I'm glad they added that sign because a lot of people have been probably trying to hop the fence. It wouldn't be surprising if somebody tried to hop this fence. Pieces of track do look really dope, though. Uh, this is a dang. This piece of track is literally tall as me. That's wild. But considering I'm not that tall, it's not saying much. But this is, dang, this is probably the closest I was gonna get so far to this piece of track. Like it's, 
I could literally almost touch that piece of track. That's awesome. That's such a wild shape too. Shiny green track. Oh, there's somebody over there. <laughs> uh, oh, they have supports right here too. So yeah, that's gonna really do it for this part. I'm gonna take a couple pictures and that's gonna be that. So I'm gonna head inside the park after this. I'll get this long angle view. Oh, there is a support over here. Got a support over there. And then uh, Sunbelt is their company that kind of works on the cranes, I think, or at least some of the uh, maintenance vehicles. So yeah, that's what it looks like right now. I'm gonna head back down get some photos and then I'm gonna go inside the park so that's what we got out here uh, I don't know when more track will be showing up I wouldn't be surprised if more shows up this week but like, of course they wanted to get that inversion done before the announcement um, and they, they did just that they didn't waste any time they worked on Sunday to get that thing done I figured they were though. So as you saw, there wasn't too much going on really outside of the park. Yes, we have some more. We have track pieces that have more geometric shapes um, and better angles to them now. So that tells me there's gonna be a lot more going on as far as them getting the elements and inversions done on this coaster now, uh, seeing as how they got the launch and the brake run done, as well as they've gotten that first element done and now they're on their way to be having the first inversion done. To be honest, that first element really could have been an inversion in itself, but I'm glad it's not. I'm, I'm kind of glad that it's a regular uh, just element. Now, walking up to this coaster, you can already see it from a distance, but when you walk up to it, sorry for my finger being in the way, I didn't even realize it till later. I was like, oh crap. They have pushed the fence forward again and they've also pushed it back in a couple areas, but for the most part, they did have to push it forward to get a lot of that work done as far as the footers and getting those supports in. They've added a nice amount of landscape. It looks really good through here. It is a little bit tight, but they've added a nice amount of landscaping. Um, I'm really hoping that they get restrooms in this area. If they don't, they really are going to have to get one at least near Intimidator or Flight of Fear. Like They've got to get some restrooms uh, in the backside of this park because having to walk all the way to the front of the interest of jungle x doesn't make any sense for you to use the restroom that's crazy but seeing this element tower over you it's pretty wild it towers over tumbili uh that does that just shows me that it, it could definitely be 135 to 140 feet for sure now if we look over the fence here as you can see there's a lot of supports and footers that little area where those footers were you can see where they push the fence all the way up because i used to be i used to be able to get really close to that footer and you see how far I am away from it now. But like I said, this whole area, it's really cool just seeing all the supports around you. You can literally touch some of them if you wanted to. This angle over here, I'm actually walking towards the support, but I'm gonna go ahead and look over the fence here. And I also found out what those pieces were for, those green pieces, they're actually gonna be for the netting. So those long green pieces are for the netting to cover up. It pretty much keeps everyone safe from if something was to fall out of the ride or say if somebody did lose their phone, it's going to protect you a little bit from at least that area um, from it falling right on your head. So it is good to have that there. But this is going to be right over the launch and everything. I'm very curious on how the station is going to be or how they're going to really integrate the station. If we're going to be able to go under the ride, I think that would be really dope. Quick shout out to Chris and uh, Raymond. Raymond is a ride up at a Reptilian. He just said, I love your content, man. Kept it rolling. And uh, I wanted to make sure I got his name. So shout out to you, Raymond. Now this area by Reptilian, they're actually working on the first inversion. So when you come out of that element, you're gonna go into that first inversion. And that's the one where you're gonna pull a lot of Gs. I was able to get an aerial view of kind of everything that's happening from riding Reptilian and do not take photos or videos while you're riding Reptilian. They will stop the ride and they will remove you from the park. I literally saw it happen, so yeah. With that being said though, it does look really dope seeing it from the aerial view. You can't really see it any other way besides riding drop tower. Now, as you can see, you can see where the old fence was kinda at, and like I said, they have pushed it all the way back. They were like, no, you cannot get that close, but they're also working in this area. They have a lot of footers in this area, and you can see this is where they have to install the first element uh, coming out of that launch. Don't know what the speed of the launch is, as of right now, but I imagine we will know tomorrow. This area over here doesn't have too much work being done. There is footers over here, but I don't know really what this area is as of right now. It's just a high voltage area, um, but I guess we will know 
in the, in the next couple of weeks here. Now, this spot had a giant crane with some footers over here and he had there was a pile of kind of lumber but this spot they've been working on this area for a nice amount of time and i'm very intrigued to see what this area is going to look like because this part has been honestly blocked off uh since the beginning of really construction this is just a closer angle by arcadia you can really see the launch track all the way from here and how long the launch actually is i'm thinking maybe 70 miles an hour i don't know for sure yet it may be 65 to 70 miles an hour. That's my thought for the launch speed. Now, as you're walking to Flight of Fear, you can literally see the coaster from that area now. So like you can see the first inversion being almost done. It's gonna be really dope getting those shots from that angle, um, as well as from Intimidator. It's gonna be really cool getting those shots. So that's pretty much the update as of right now. Like I said, there was a lot going on, but I want you all to kind of just watch the rest of the content. I do have to work tomorrow, so I will try my best to get that footage out to you all. If they release it early, then I should be fine and I should be able to get the content out to you. If not, you will probably see it Thursday. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. As always, more content is on the way. Until next time, peace out.